So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Pujol, uh, and the focus on this talk, it will be really like to speak of Apparmore, and especially like the Apparmore profiles. Um, everything is on open source on GitHub already. Uh, yeah, so let's go and to have a look at this a bit deeper now. Um, so usually the people that come here, they don't present their company, but their company are a bit bigger than the company where I work from. <laughs> um, so technically that's, that's called the collaboratory at TU Dublin. So the collaboratory itself, it's a small spin-off company from the University of TU Dublin in Ireland. Uh, this is an university that is specialized in, in cyber security in general. And the purpose of this company is to make more links between like academy and industry um, and to make both parts to like each other a bit, a bit more. And one of our main product for us is like to uh, provide to every uh, company or university uh, some sort of security operations center for training purposes with a really like a training that is tailored for the need on any kind of companies. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Uh, it's brand new, like uh, from last week. Uh, even this is actually a 3D image uh, because we don't have the actual <laughs> new image. This is so new than this. Uh, yeah, so that was for the adver advertisement part. So now let's go back to Rappermore. <laughs> Um, so I think everyone here knows what is Apparmore. Uh, everyone knows that too that it is enabled by default on most of, I mean, half of the Linux distribution, I would say. Um, the problem is like by default, you don't have a lot of profiles. Uh, so this is only an, an example, like you have something like 40, 50 uh, profiles by default. And when you actually run the stuff, you have only like uh, a few actually processes that are running. And this is kind of an issue because Apparmore is a really nice tool, but if you don't have profile for it and that has running with a software that has always running, it means like you are not really using this nice tool. But in a way, that's not really a big surprise because from an historical point of view, this stuff was mostly focused on server. And especially on a way like, because we know that it's hard to make uh, a lot of uh, um, profile for a lot of programs. So it was focused on server. It was focused on network, uh, network, uh, network system and with a user system. And like every, every Mac, Mac, Mac uh, policies, we always have the same issue. Like on the first results on Google is how, how do I disable this shit? Sorry. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of a bit of an issue. So here it's Apparmore.d, uh, which is a full set of Apparmore profile. And when I say the full set, it's mostly like this is, a, well, there are a lot of profile, but they are, like, they are expected to work together in order to ensure that you config most of the system. Um, so I have to say that uh, merit like, is due to some other people too. So here, like uh, Michael Mark, Morfikov, I think, yes, uh, because this work is based, it was original, originally based on uh, this repository where I extended it with my profile and did a lot of work regarding the test of this stuff to ensure it works uh, everywhere because it was mostly focusing on Debian uh, with for, the, for his own system. Um, so now, okay, we have some profile, that's nice. But like there are really a lot of uh, packages and, and a lot of uh, programs, and it's obviously not possible to confine everything. So the question is, what should we confine, and what should we not confine, obviously after? So for this, we need a bit to go back to go back to the basics. Basics that from the last talk uh, from today and yesterday, I know you know it, but we need to go back to the security model of Linux. Um, so long time ago, uh, the idea was a bit like uh, if a program is, in your, is running on your computer, you trust it because anyway, you don't have any other option. But now we don't trust any, anything that runs on, on your computer anymore. You, you do still do trust some stuff, but not everything. 
Um, and in order to solve this, you have this kind of like uh, implementation. So a secu secure boot, like you can of sandbox everything. So you have some uh, so so sort of confinement. And on top of this, sometime, <laughs> you try to put like uh, an immutable, an immutable core, core system uh, for, your, um, for, for, your, for the main system uh, of, of your distribution. Um, and if we look a bit deeper at this figure, we see that really like the confinement part is really focused on the core system. We think like the application we want to, we are usually sandboxing. So every server stuff that, that will run in a VM or in Docker, uh, every like your favorite uh, game, your favorite mail system and so on and so on. Usually it's in a sandbox and therefore we don't need to, conf to, to, to write profile for, for them. And that's the, the concept here that what I followed in this project is like we really are going to focus on what we have in this core system. Now the question is what do you put really in the core system? And because obviously uh, this is the Linux world, world uh, at the end uh, this is a distribution that decide what they put, what they what, what they put. So this is only like general uh, scope of this program, and after everyone is free to do whatever they want. Um, but so obviously, like uh, the basic tool to to confine, I will say. So all every root stuff, so system D, D bus, network manager, all the network stuff, uh, GDM, and so on and so on. Uh, the desktop environment too. So right now I only put support for GNOME because these are long to really quite long to make, uh, and I'm working for uh, to have an integration with KDE and everything that is uh, user space uh, like some the sound like uh, Xorg, Yelan, X Yelan and so on. And at the end too, like we still need to support like the sound the sound ma manager. So when I said sandbox manager is still like a libvirt is seen as a sandbox manager here, obviously. And even Steams, because now, nowadays uh, they run a uh, game in sandbox. Uh, so even Steam is a sandbox manager here. And at the end, we have some, some special application like web browser and file browser. Um, yeah. uh, so now we know what to confine. Uh, and just so quite a few reminders, if you really want to have a good set of uh, confin confinement in a way. So first, uh, yes, this, this is upper more, so this is mandatory access control. So obviously uh, we are going to really focus on um, allow list, not deny, deny list. Um, and it's not always easy to do this. <laughs> and sometimes it's cool, it can be seen as a lazy path to just uh, allow a lot of stuff and say, the, yeah, that should be okay. Uh, but no, we need to, st to stick to the Mac uh, principle. Uh, obviously, it's, I mean, obviously, it should not break a program, which is <laughs> much more complex than in sounds. Uh, as, as we said, you should not confine any everything in your computer. Uh, and we try to be to, to be as uh, de device and distribution ag agnostic as possible. So this is time to a small demo. Uh, after this, this is Mac policies. So by definition, you, there is no, no, nothing really to show. But uh, so yeah. So here you have uh, Ubuntu VM. If you have a look at uh, shop you can see uh, on the uh, security attribute here that you do have actually uh, uh, an hypermore profile for every single uh, um, application running here. So we have all the system stuff, we have uh, everything that is related to uh, its here GNOME by itself and so on and so on. Uh, we can even have a look a bit deeper here. So these are only like the only applications that are that don't have an, an upper more profile and that are running right now in the system. So what we see is like we have uh, well we we have this shell. We have systemd as the init system and as the uh, initial system for, as a user. So this is plan. <laughs> But uh, if you want to have to be able to to do have a full system co uh, 
a good field system conf confinement, you need to confine everything else before, otherwise it's a bit more complex. Um, and there are some issues with upper more to this kind of stuff. It's, I won't go deeper here. Uh, so this time, this is not a VM, this is this actual computer. Yep, sorry. Um, and here, so this is not Ubuntu, but Arch Linux. Arch Linux. It is running GNOME too. Uh, and we can see we have exactly the same stuff, but um, uh, there are so, some minor ch ch changes if you look deeper because not the same distribution, a lot of stuff are actually different. And uh, here, actually here, you have this little <laughs> program that is actually not confined because this is the kind of software that really can mess up with your boot system if you actually <laughs> uh, block some things, including in uh, in a complain mode, yes, because everything is here is, a, is in complain mode and not in enforce mode, because this is a dev, this is for dev purposes. But even in complain mode, uh, which means like uh, there are a lot of tests to do, uh, even like on a bare metal system, on laptop, on servers, uh, before to be able to um, ensure that you have full system confinement for some of this uh, tool. Uh, yeah, so quickly, uh, this is another VM this time with Arch Linux and KDE. So I will go quickly here, but same stuff again. Uh, you have KDE specific uh, tool here. Uh, this time you have Xorg that is running here and not Wayland. Um, you have a bit less, uh, a bit more stuff that are not confined uh, because it's still a work in progress. But this is the same uh, con concept. Last one, this time this is. Uh, OpenSUSE on XDE, and you have the same stuff. Yep. So that was for the small demo. Now, if we have a, get a look a bit deeper at uh, what actually we have in the profile, uh, so it's quite various, like from uh, 10 line profiles to 600, 666 line profile with GNOME shell. And actually, this is not a joke. This is the real number size of this profile. Um, I make no comment on this. Um, and this is mostly for uh, DBS Royal, which is another subject by itself. Um, yeah, so otherwise, what do, what do we have uh, in this uh, first uh, profile here? So it's a bit standard as you will get for any kind of other profile database in a way. Uh, what I had hit myself, it's uh, because it's really handy when you have a lot of program and uh, with a lot of attachments sometimes, is like I define really specifically one variable here that will be like the entry point of the program and that will be uh, used later in the profile. Um, otherwise here, so this sample program just need to check if you have uh, upper more on, and therefore you need to have uh, to list some resource and to check the mount points. Uh, yeah, so nothing really fantastic here. Uh, another program, as example, this time that make a bit more sense maybe for you, uh, because this is yes, a smart card uh, demand for GPG. Um, so here, what do we have? It's like already we see we have a, a bit more entry point of the, in this program. Uh, we need to speak with other um, uh, with other pro program in the same set of prof uh, in, in the same repository of profiles. Uh, we have some special abstraction too uh, because it's kind of uh, really useful to be able just to say, okay, we we need access to some USB. This is how it works. I don't care now, right now. And we have a lot of admin configurable uh, variables that allow you to really. Uh, um, I mean, a bit like the scope, it's like a, you have some special file because you are your, as a Linux expert, as, as a Linux dev, uh, you, you want your file system where you, or how you want with your uh, own special tiny configuration. The purpose is just like you only have to uh, define or redefine some of these uh, variables and you should be good to go. Um, yeah. And uh, last but not least, so regarding GNOME shell, GNOME in general, so it's not only one profile, but like so for GNOME itself, for instance, it's over 80 profiles that need to work together. And on top of this, you have the GNOME virtual file system that can be used for, by other uh, desktop environments, and you have over 30 profiles for itself. 
and I don't know if we see here a lot, but like we, I mean like GNOME as a special architecture, uh, for instance, this is, is technically GDM that start, uh, uh, that start some Wayland or X org session, and after that will start your actually your your, your actual uh, GNOME stuff. And therefore, when you work uh, on the creation of this kind of profile, well, it's better to first know GNOME uh, and discover how what, what the, the actual architecture of the system uh, is that that will help help you a lot and after the, like the um, the idea with two it's like to uh, stay as close as possible to the actual architecture of so here of of of, of, of gnome because like if uh, some dev decided so here we need an external uh, process to run some things it, usually it means like uh, this other process are doing different stuff and therefore it's good to put them in a different profile it's not always true there are some exceptions uh, but usually it's a good pattern <laughs> Yeah, so when we have a lot of profile, um, it's time to have some kind of standardization as much as possible in how you write profile. Uh, because like this, it, it can allow you really to uh, detect issues in a profile, to detect some security feature or not security feature in the profile and so on and so on. So there will be more work uh, to do here. This is still, as a reminder, this is still really a work in progress stuff. Um, the plan is li later, maybe like even like to have some profile linter to actually do a real check of uh, every kind of issues that we we can we could check here. Yeah, and so uh, because we have a lot of profile too, we need a, we have some kind of helpers. So this, for instance, like the first one is like uh, something that is really useful in systemd because systemd likes to do this kind of stuff. So to put uh, the result of your command into uh, a pager so here with this kind of helper we can directly like uh, send whatever result in the pagers this pager will have a weaker co confinement than the actual system command uh, so it's kind of time saving so stuff we have similar stuff with like uh, xdg open like stuff when when we need to open whatever kind of resources we have a special helper software uh, helper program profile sorry <laughs> that will um, that already has a list of all the program a normal all the programs that a normal gui should be able to 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 call yeah so everything is not beautiful still uh, because apparently is path path based uh, the distribution well they are distribution they are they are doing whatever they want and this is normal this is not <laughs> This is normal, this is their job to do whatever they want, but it generates some issues. For instance, this is the Firefox attachment. So all the possible way where uh, you can find Firefox uh, in any kind of Linux distribution. Uh, so it's starting to be a bit of a mess. Uh, uh, and you have the same stuff for Chromium, Chrome, Brave, all the uh, browsers are the same kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so, and at the end, it's a bit of a waste of, of time to maintain all of this stuff. This is maybe the, f the first time, but not the last time that I'm going to say, we need helps, please. <laughs> um, so, uh, and after, like, every kind of, like, a lot of other programs have similar stuff, like, uh, like, every distribution puts the, the binary where, where, where they want, and therefore we have this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, same stuff. Um, Apparmore doesn't follow Simlink uh, for obvious security reason, uh, which means like we need to take measures to, to ensure that every time we are going to catch bin or user bin. Uh, and after we have more kind of classic uh, issues like, I mean, constraint that every other software maintainer will have. Uh, it's just like here we are not going to maintain one program but one dozen program. Um, I mean profile. <laughs> uh, but this is kind of more classic but still which means like we need maintainer please. Um, so now I show you a bit what we have and now this is time a bit to have a, uh, a look at uh, how do we do this. So as we already saw in the small demo, uh, basically everything works in a VM. Uh, for all distribution, we, I, we try to, 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 to use, basically. Um, so we select one target distribution. We build a test VM for this. We have the script to, 
to do this, we install a parameter that the inside and we check whatever uh, issue we, we get. Uh, on top of this, I made like this tiny uh, tool like a, a log, uh, just that gives you like a small overview and a colorful overview of whatever logs uh, has been raised uh, by, audit day, by audit day or system D or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't really mention up this up to now, but like um, usually when you generate a profile, you need to ensure that the logs that you are collected, collected are actually legitimate. Like you are not going to generate profile from a program that is, has already been attacked, and therefore maybe like the profile you are going to make is going to have vulnerabilities in, <laughs> in it. So the good stuff here, uh, because every time we, ge we generate uh, a new like VM on purpose for this and only for this, it means like uh, we are sure or I mean, confident uh, that like what you, we have in the VM is trustworthy, um, that there is no attacker in it, and therefore when logs have been raised in this VM, we are confident that th they are legitimate, and it is not someone that mm, something that have been weird uh, or something else. Yeah, so um, I already show you, you this a bit, but like basically right now we are supporting uh, all the, the major distributions that support upper more, and this is a bit the scope, with different kind of flavors, so server, GNOME, KDE. Uh, if you want to have uh, support for your desktop environment, please help, because that's that long to do. Uh, and technically, so this is kind of classic stuff too, <laughs> uh, to generate uh, the VM, like we have like a packer and cloud in it uh, tool uh, uh, to generate this VM, this run on, on, on really classic uh, libvirt stuff, like uh, with uh, the grand stuff uh, behind. Okay, so we have stuff to generate some VMs, so we, are, we have a development work workflow, but at some point we need to test this stuff. And this is where it become a bit, hey, um, so because if we, as we saw before, like if we don't test this stuff, we, it will raise some logs, some issues in some distribution, in some conce uh, concept, in some integra weird integration that we didn't think of before. Um, and the question is, how do you, how can you test a polymorph profile? So in a way, like, uh, can you even uh, ensure that you will always have a good profile, perfect profile? I think it's not even possible at all, but at least we can try to get to, to, to get all the bugs as, as soon as possible. And so the scope for this is, so first we have your, you have your VM, that's fine. You install your uh, Aparmor uh, profile, that's fine, for your specific distribution. And let's say like uh, this stuff are working fine, meaning like uh, once you install all of this stuff, you are not uh, raising any, any issues. It means like if you are doing the same run like uh, one week after and like you have you get new issues it means like maybe there have been an update and maybe this update uh, generated some stuff requires more prof uh, more uh, a new profile require more access to some profile and so on and so on and therefore it's allow you, it's it can allow you to detect where you have issues and after obviously it's up to you to decide what do you want to do with this but now you want to test uh, your profile too. So the concept is kind of classic, uh, I would say. So you run your profile, your, the program that where you have a profile for in the VM you, and you see what goes wrong. You need to do this uh, like in a VM and in a classic laptop server uh, as we saw before because they are not exactly the same, they can generate different stuff. Uh, but now you have a question, okay, so what program actually are you going to take? Because, okay, I, we have 1,000 programs, much more actually, but that doesn't matter. Um, we have the name of this program, but like, are we going just to, to, to run just the classic command for uh, UI program anyway? We know this is useless anyway. So we need a lot of uh, test command like this uh, in order to generate a lot of tests. And by a lot, it's uh, possibly 1,000 uh, of them maybe even more. So for this, I had kind of a hacky solution. So there, there is these things called TLDR, which basically it's a man page for lazy people. 
um, that give you this. So for instance, this is the user add help for TLDR, and it, it directly gives you some example, classic example of how do you create user, uh, all the possible way to create user with TLDR. And so when I saw this, I said, oh, but maybe we can run, run this stuff as test. And that's not that stupid because yeah, like we have or not actually dozen of man page, like, man page like this. We can automate everything. This is much more complex than just uh, asking for the usage, man the, the, the casting helps of the stuff. Um, and we can, and once we have this, we can even like generate, use this to add manual tests for this, to, for more complex integration and more complex stuff. So yes, it seems to be good like this. Uh, now it's still a bit of crazy because like, uh, so here, when we, you are deleting a user, you need to actually decide what user do you want to delete. You want to delete, uh, so you need to define like this uh, uh, this uh, arguments, which is classic when you want to test uh, when when you want to, when you want to run a program. You need to manage every kind of interactive interactive, interactive program, in, including a program with UI. Um, you know that this stuff is not enough for more, the most complex system anyway. Uh, and you better run this stuff in a VM because if you run this on your system, it will just uh, like remove your classic user. Um, yeah, I did an experience with this before. Um, and um, yeah, so it's not perfect, but it's here. It's here and uh, thanks to this, I made uh, like, a, like the initial version of uh, uh, a test suite for Apparmore Profile that use uh, this TLDR uh, man page, manual page uh, as a, to bootstrap all the tests. At the end, it looks like this stuff. So this is for, uh, ICP, uh, for the SAPI command. Um, by the way, if you run this stuff in a VM, you will get no things uh, because you don't have battery in a VM. Uh, and therefore, yes, this is a reminder. You need, we need to run this in <laughs> Uh, like a VM is not enough, like we need more than this. Uh, but like even like with um, kind of quick test, like I was able to have a lot of tests um, from a lot of profile quite, quite quickly. And this is only the beginning because I bypass every stuff that was too complex where we need to uh, um, provide like a full uh, partition or uh, some amputated file and stuff like this. So this is only the beginning and it's already gives a lot of tests. Um, and regarding the result for now, uh, I would say they are good and bad, which is kind of nice. Because with this kind of stuff, like if we get a lot of, if you erase a lot of logs, it means like, well, when you wrote your profile, it means you didn't finish it at all. And you don't need this to test, uh, to, to check. I mean, you know, and this is something you should al already know anyway. Uh, and if we get no things, most likely it means like because your tests are not good enough to actually cover everything. Um, so in a way, that's fine. Most of the time, um, the stuff I, that, I, that was raised is because like you need a new console access, which is normal because technically like uh, when you send this stuff, you send it from a CLI, and therefore you, uh, the program needs to write in a terminal and so on and so on. Um, and this, most of the time, this was the uh, missing stuff, so nothing's really to, to worry about in a way. Uh, but sometime, time to time, you actually have the stuff where now actually here, uh, in some weird case, uh, this uh, specific program needs uh, to need access to some more resources, to need to need, need to use uh, one uh, one new program that you, you didn't think of. Uh, and this is ex exactly for this kind of stuff that I made this, so this is kind of nice, even if obviously, um, because they have already been tested quite a lot, like it's been already two years uh, in this project, um, most, of the time are, most of the stuff are already working kind of fine. Uh, yeah, and therefore for the future work, uh, well, there are tests, tests and tests to continue. As, I'll, uh, as I already mentioned, like there are some linter to do, uh, later some full system policy to implement. 
and uh, at some time, at some point, like we will have uh, indeed like a bit more integration uh, with Avermore itself. Uh, but obviously, in, this will be done only after the tests are done. Otherwise, it's a bit useless. Um, and yes, uh, please help here. Uh, we need people to test this stuff uh, with their own software, with their own Linux distribution, with their own sort of uh, whatever uh, that can only help us. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, I forgot to mention it, but like, uh, so you have everything on GitHub, but you have a nice documentation website too, uh, if you want to test the stuff. Any question? So you said the, the profiles range from 10 lines to 666 lines. Do you have a feeling for like, all 1,500 about how many lines the, the total profiles are? How many lines of what? For all the profiles. If you would add up all the lines for all 1,500, do you have a feel for about how many lines that would be? I don't know at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, you know, Fedora policy for SE Linux is like 120,000 rules. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of curious of how it would line up complexity-wise. My guess is, in the end, you're going to come up with similar complexity. You're going to end up yeah. with a pretty large policy, but yeah. I was just kind of curious. Thanks. Yeah, uh, this is something I can, I can have a look after, yeah. That could be, uh, yeah. Um, since this is developed and maintained separately from the applications mm -hmm. that the profiles are about, um, do you maintain sort of specific versions of the repo so that you can tell a distro, like, yeah, um, pin to this? Not yet, uh, because up to now, this is mostly a working project stuff. Like, uh, I would say there is, it's not even in, in, a sti in a stable setup, even for Arch Linux. Um, so this is too early for this. Uh, there are some, already some kind of stuff, like technically you can run it on Debian, you can run it, you can run it, run it on Arch Linux. Um, there are some stuff that you will give, give up on Debian because they support an older version of Avermore and so on and so on. But like, um, it is tested, but a bit less tested <laughs> on Debian, to be honest. Um, so yes, lighter they will be, they should be, like you will get, you, you get in any other project in a way, uh, but it's still in a dev, we are still in a dev version uh, right now, uh, so it's a bit early for this. Uh. Yeah, no further questions? Thanks.